we're off and running. Just me and you, camera. Nobody else has showed up yet. No one else has shown up yet, so it's me and you, camera. Where's my camera at? It's over here. Where is it? Oh, it's right there. I gotta get something. I gotta get some kind of a sticker or something to remind me where the lens is. <laughs> Oops, I forgot to go get something. I'll be right back. Here I am. Forgot my iPad. <laughs> coronavirus or no coronavirus, I'm back to my normal schedule of uh, work. Working a lot. <laughs> and so I'm no longer prepared for these Facebook Live programs. Everything is off of the, off the cuff. And uh, <laughs> it's the way it is. So, uh, but it can probably be f more fun that way because there's no telling what kind of mistakes I'm going to make or what the problem is. So, who knows? Well, let's get some commercials out of the way. Let's get a hat sold. Right there it is. Look at there. There's, look at there. Check out Mike right there. I can't see. I need a I need a cameraman, an audio guy, and a producer, and I'm doing all of it. So that's the way it is. Look at Mike though; he's green, and I'm next to Mike, and then uh, Adam. And there's Tim. He's red because he's just mad. I don't know what he's mad about. Well, he's smiling. Maybe he's not mad. Maybe he's just holding a real high, long note. I don't know. But old time preachers quartet. Sang myself happy. Man, oh man, folks are loving that. It's charting high on the, all the charts and everything. Wow, just. Very blessed. Very blessed. Thank, thanks to all the fans who's uh, calling, wanting to hear it, and all the radio stations playing it. It's a blessing. Go to oldtimepreachersquartet.com if you want to buy a hat or if you want to buy one of the coronavirus specials. We got them there. If you like any of the songs we do, we got all the soundtracks there. Matter of fact, I've got two albums full of soundtracks all on one disc that uh, you can now buy for a greatly reduced price. And so you might want to check all that out. Old Time Preachers Quartet. Dot com. Oh, Hillbilly Gilly says, I wear mine. Great song. Thank you, Hillbilly Gilly. My friend from Misery. I mean, Missouri. All right, here we got this. It's not December yet. We may not get to go in December. You know, just depends on everything that's going on with this coronavirus and stuff. But if we're good to go, man, we're going to eat and sing, and then we're going to eat some more, then we're going to preach some, and then we're going to go back and eat, and then we're going to repeat it again. Eat, sing, eat, preach, eat. Um, and it's going to be great there in the Smokies. Big old camp meeting, lots of preaching, lots of singing, lots of eating, no kidding. For more information, we want you to come. We want you to bring like a senior adult class. I'm telling you, that's their Christmas church vacation thing that y'all need to do. It just is. Just is. Call 865-278-3681. 865-278-3681. Join myself and the Old Time Preachers Quartet and Barry Rowland and Deliverance and Bob Sellers and Sherry Taylor and Sacred Harmony and Covenant and Paul Bolin and Chelsea Estes. And we might have some others as well. All right, so we got that out of the way. Now, jot down this toll-free number for me, would you? 800-360-5051. 800-360-5051. I don't want one penny. All I want is 30 seconds. And I want you to call that hotline number, and then I want you to tell me, who you think will be the favorite young artist for 2020 in the Singing News Fan Awards? And the five nominees include Autumn Nealon Clark of the Nealons. Hey, Uncle S. Hey, Uncle Adam and Uncle Angel. Um, Trevor Con Conkle of the Mark Trammell Quartet. Karen Peck of New Rivers, uh, Carrie Gooch. Kennedy Hayes of Milan Hayes Family. And Ethan Whisnett of the Whisnets. So again, that's Autumn Nealon Clark of the Nealons, Trevor Conkle, Mark Tramble Quartet, Carrie Gooch, Karen Peck of New River, uh, Kennedy Hayes, Mylon Hayes Family, and Ethan Whisnett of the Whisnets. 800-360-5051. So after the program tonight, I want you to call that number. 
and give me who you think is going to be the favorite new artist. And I want you to do this. If you think they missed somebody, who did they miss? Hmm? Who'd they miss? And say that name in there as well. Okay, so that commercial's out of the way. Okay, I still got this, and I still don't have all the information, but I just love putting this old poster up. It says, attention gospel music fans. It talks about Middle Tennessee, and, and, and if you lived in Middle Tennessee from the mid-90s to um, the mid-2000s or something like that, I don't know when when they lost their mind and got rid of the signals. But we used to have 104.9 and 105.1, Southern Gospel Music in Middle Tennessee. There's one of the posters. I was on there for 20 years, and I ran it for most of the 20 years, on every day, seven days a week. Well, um, they made a silly move, and and then and they got rid of it. And uh, somebody is uh, taking their place on the west side of Nashville, so it'll be Middle Tennessee, aim more toward the west, but uh, a lot of Middle Tennessee is going to get it up into Kentucky as well, and uh, it's it's just close. Super duper duper duper. It's happening. Matter of fact, they're already testing it on the air, but I can't officially say stuff, but I'm going to be doing morning drive, just like the old days back here in Middle Tennessee, in the Nashville market, and I'm thankful for that. It's great. Hallelujah. About time to get some good good southern gospel music back where we sing about the book, the blood, and the blessed hope in the middle Tennessee. So I hope tomorrow I can give you all of the details, but it's going to be good, and it's coming back. FM, too. Not just an AM signal, but FM. And uh, so there's that. Okay. This is Facebook Live with Les, southern gospel music, memorabilia, memories, and ministry, right? Okay, so uh, how about some music? We're going to go to, we are still in uh, 2002. We're going back to the September 2013 issue of the Singing News Magazine. This one here, we've been in it for weeks. We just can't exhaust it. They've got so many pictures, and they're going year by year um, for uh, during the Freedom Hall years in Louisville, Kentucky, which was 1994, I think, to... What, 2013 or 14, something like that. Let me see if I can find that out in here. Where does it say? There's that, and then there's that. Okay, so it doesn't go all the way through this issue. This It says it's part one, so part two will have the last years. But so anyway, we're all the way. We started in 1994, and we're up to 2002. And by the way, I've got my Cubs red, white, and blue uniform um, T-shirt on right there. Go Cubbies. Baseball's coming back. It's all good. All right, 2002. Um, so here, uh, we're, we're gonna, I'm going to play three different groups, and here are some of the pictures. Let me see. I'm going to, let's, let's see, what am I going to do first? Let's do, let's do Greater Vision. Right there is Jason Waldrop, and, and everybody is thronging the uh, Greater Vision product table there in Freedom Hall. And uh, boy, I'm telling you, did they ever. You couldn't stir them with a stick. There's Rodney back there. See his bald head shining just like mine. And look at all the people. Wow. That's a lot of people right there. So I'm going to play something from my favorite Greater Vision album. My favorite. This, boys and girls, is some kind of CD. It's called Far Beyond This Place. Now, everybody likes this one because it has My Name is Lazarus on it. And let's face it, I like, I like it because of that, too. I think My Name is Lazarus is just simply one of the greatest songs Greater Vision certainly has ever done. And it's on this CD. And guess what? I'm not going to play that one. I'm going to play the title song because the title song, to me, is the best song on there. I'll say this. It's my favorite song on there. I don't know that it's better than My Name is Lazarus. It's their signature song. It's their runaway biggest song ever. And, uh, but I love Far Beyond This Place. So let's say we play that one. And that is cut number six. Let me get it all set up here. And I'll show you some of the pictures inside of this album jacket. They did a bunch of, of the strings in Budapest, Budapest, Hungary, Budapest, that's it, uh, Hungary. 
and uh, they got some cool pictures in there. We'll show you that as this song is playing. Okay, which, what did I say it was? It was song number six. Boy, I love this song, Far Beyond This Place. What a great song. Great vision. Facebook Live with Les, Southern Gospel Music Memorabilia Memories and Ministry. Her heart was filled with gratitude The bottle with perfume as she spilled them both, her praises flowed and filled the crowded room. As the ointment poured upon the Lord, others grumbled at the waste. But Jesus let them know her worship flowed. on it, which is the huge hit, but my favorite, you just heard it right there, far beyond this place. Man, that song stirs my soul, doesn't it yours? I'm telling you, it's special when you can, when you get yourself to a place in worship where you can cut through the nasty now and now, when you can cut through all of the, the storms of life, all of the things that's going wrong. All of the, I've lost my jobs and we can't work and coronavirus and this one's died and what's, what am I going to do here and, and mortgage payments and, and I'm a bad doctor report and my bank account is low and you and get through all of that and get in your spirit to a place where through it all you know that God's bigger than all of it 
And he's brought you through things before and he'll bring you through things, things again. And when all of that starts to just melt together, before long, you're worshiping beyond the nasty now, beyond all of the junk, far into a far country, right into the throne room of God. And that's real worship. Far beyond this place. And that song stirs my soul. Hallelujah. We'll keep going on here in just a little bit. I'm coming out of the gate being stirred up today. Who's on here with me? Well, look at there's my Aunt Sue. Imagine that. She's got her mask on there. I'm on with her mask. Janice Phillips. Hello, Janice Phillips. Oh, Hillbilly. Sherry Taylor. Amber and Jared Vanderslice. Come on now. Brother Hillbilly. Brother Hillbilly Gilly wears his old-time preacher's quartet hat. That's what he's talking about. Good evening, Father Les. <laughs> Father Les, that's hilarious. Hello, Rick Murphy. You sent me a video or something, or somebody did, earlier today, and I watched it. It's good. Your family, your, your family does a good job, brother. Glenn Miller. Dude, what's happening? <laughs> Thanks for the CDs. Y'all are my feature group tomorrow on my morning show. What's up, Glenn Miller? Thank you, buddy. Hey, type on there where they can go online and listen to it so they can listen to you. <coughs> it's W-M-E-R. It's in Mississippi. And the Old Time Preachers Quartet is going to be his featured group on his morning drive show in the morning. So if he uh, can type in there um, exactly where you can go to listen to it, I want everybody to tune in uh, on your smartphone devices or on your computer in, in the uh, live stream. So hopefully he will uh, give us that information in a minute. Brian Epinette. Uh, Adam and Angel, how you doing? Abby, Addy, what's up, gang? Good to see you tonight. Patty Graham from Ohio. And Chuck Robbins. You're not related to Marty Robbins, are you? I'm just asking. John Matson, Shirlene, Shirlene Phipps, Emma Bunch from Kentucky. Where at in Kentucky, Emma? My mom and dad's from Moorhead, or was, from Moorhead in Oliveville, Kentucky. How close are you? Hello, Joy Holden. Good to see you. Get ready to record some more songs for Sister Joy. We're going to get to singing before long, too. Bobby Ferguson, Nancy Clark Truett, Warren Brown. Hey, Miss Elaine. How are you, Miss Elaine? Good to see you, always. Miss Elaine, you're going to come to the house where we're going to do one of these live together. And bring me something to eat when you do it. I'll come and get you if you want me to. There's old Hillbilly. That's my kind of Southern gospel. Amen. Far beyond this place, Brother Hillbilly. Mary Faye Jackson, good to see you. Hey, Brother John's watching. He's been busy preaching the last little while. That's why he hasn't been on with us. But that's okay, Brother John. You preach on. You don't have to be on live with us. You can check us out later when you want. You just preach. Adam and Angel, hey man, I'm a bunch. Oh, they must have ju been jumping in when I took off there for a minute. <laughs> Brother Glenn, Paul Hyde, hey Paul Hyde. Boy, it's a fine bass singer, Paul Hyde, just so you know. Whew. Brian Hoffman, Rocky Ewing, hey Rocky. I do that every time I see that. Hey, Tim Kinchin, I just talked to Tim and Missy a while ago while I was eating some sketty. Brian Hoffman, Brad Gates from Mississippi, Jackie Fortner. Mary Faye Jackson, Brad Gates. Okay, so uh, um, my buddy from Mississippi, Glenn Miller, um, he didn't say where you can go. But maybe you can do a little research online. So tomorrow morning during his morning drive show on a, on a nice FM in Mississippi, the Old Time Preachers Quartet is going to be his feature artist. And the radio station call letters, it's W-M-E-R, Mississippi. So do a search on it, and it'll probably take you to a... I don't know, their Facebook page or website or both. And I bet you you can click on something there and you can hear the stream in the morning. And I want you to listen and support that station as they support uh, the Old Time Preachers Quartet in the morning. That's so nice. And there's Mike Rogers. Okay, so is that the Mike Rogers? Hey, Mike, are you the Mike that sings with Jimmy Fortune and, the, and Ben and all in the quartet thing and you and I traveled some with Jimmy? Is that the same Mike Rogers? If it is, sir, you're a singing machine and a fine flat top acoustic player. And if it's not that one, I don't know who you are, but I'm glad to meet your acquaintance. 
Oh, here we go. We are working to, we are working to the live stream. We are trying to get it by the end of the year. Oh, you can't hear it online. Well, now that's a bummer. So between now and in the morning, you've got to drive to Meridian, Mississippi. So as soon as I'm done with the show here tonight, matter of fact, keep the volume up and go ahead and pack. And when you're done with the show, start driving to Meridian, Mississippi. All of you that are watching, I see Ohio and um, Indiana, and uh, y'all are going to have to drive, drive all night long. But it'll be worth it because the Old Time Preachers Quartet is going to be <laughs> the spotlight artist on that big FM there in Meridian, Mississippi. <laughs> Mike, hey, it is you. Good night of living, Mike Rogers. Whew. You can quote me on that. Les Butler says, Whew, when talking about Mike Rogers. My word. That's all I'm saying. Just, whew. Steve Montgomery's watch. Okay, so let's go. Uh, is Facebook Live with Les Southern Gospel Music? See, we did. Oh, I, I had some uh, music memorabilia. I forgot my piece of memorabilia with uh, it, that involves greater vision. This goes back to... I think 1980, I don't know, 80-something, mid-80s. And it was uh, at the National Quartet Convention, not in Freedom Hall, which is what this series has been, or been about, the Louisville, Kentucky years, the 20 years. This goes back before Freedom Hall, back when it was in Nashville. And if you remember down a municipal auditorium in Nashville, you had to go to the basement, and that's where all the exhibits uh, were located. Except as you, <laughs> as you walked down the spiral, huge spiral staircase that went the entire perimeter of municipal, uh, they had booths going down the, the staircase. Uh, it's not even a staircase, it's just a slope, a sloped walk. But anyway, downstairs was, was where most of the... Uh, 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 booths were. And check this out. Here is a picture from the mid-80s. This is just after Gerald Wolfe left the cathedrals. Singing with Michael English and Mike Lefevre downstairs at a, I think it was a Benson River Song booth. Look at that upright piano. There's Gerald at the piano, Michael, uh, the tall one there behind him, and then Mike Lefevre with the unbuttoned, double-breasted jacket there. And they were singing something, and I went by there, and I just took a picture of that. That's from the mid-'80s, so that's going back, well, a long time, however long the mid-'80s is. <laughs> 35 years or so. So anyway, there's, a, there's Southern Gospel memorabilia from your old buddy Les, and this is mine. You can't find that picture anywhere else but right here. All right, so let's go back to the magazine. And what started everything today was this picture right here, Greater Visions booth. And now let's go right across from that picture, and we see uh, Tim Riley, we see the Perrys. Check it out right there. Going back to, uh, this is 2002 now, 2002. We're in the year 2002 in this 20-year pictorial history. So what say... We play some Perry's music. And we are going to go back to their Perry's. I'm going way on back. What is this? This is 1988. Boy, I'm going back like Gerald's picture there. God's little people. Look at there. God's little people. And as my mom would call them, the singing Purries with a U, Purry. The singing Purries. That's how they talk in Moorhead and Olivelle, Kentucky. The singing Purries. So let's, uh, let's let the singing Purries do their biggest song from this album. Let's say we have them sing, I Remember the Day. There they are.
some hearts up in the air. If you remember that day. God's little people right there when the Lord saved me. By the way, Adam, the answer to your question is Mary Spencer wrote that song. Mary Spencer, not of the Spencers, not of the Spencer Spencers, not of the J.B. Barb, Kevin and Wade Spencer Spencers. Okay, let's see who's on here with us before we go to the next song. And I've got some, uh, see, do I have some more stuff to show you? Oh, yeah, I got some more pictures. Emma Rigsby, hey, hey, David Stewart, what's on? Michael sings this every other Sunday, uh, he, so he likes that one. Hey, by the way, I don't know if it's, I don't know which one of the Davisons, but somebody stole your uh, Facebook identity and was uh, instant messaging me today, so you might want to check, I don't know if it's Will or, Will or Bill or which one it was, but um, somebody stole your Facebook stuff and was bothering me, wanting, wanting my social security number and stuff, so there you go. Amber and Jared, hey Ben. Neil Underwood, Steve Montgomery, February 17th, 1972. Amen. I remember the day. I was asking you all to put the day in there. What, what's the day? Go ahead. Keep typing. Keep typing. The day the Lord saved your soul. Mine's September 15th, 1978. Joliet, Illinois. Thank God, Brother Hamlin, that the Holy Ghost goes north of the Mason-Dixon line. Brother Hamlin, let me, let me hear you shout right there. Amen. Speaking of Brother Hamlin, September 30th, 1979, 12.20 p.m. Mine was 9.15 p.m. At the Old Ambassador Baptist Church, Allen Park, Michigan. I shall never forget the day. You know that's right, Brother John. Adam and Angel. There you go. Mary Spencer was the name of that answer. VHS. Oh, I got the VHS of that. 
Hey, Joel Fowler, fine bass singer Joel Fowler. David Stewart didn't know that was on vinyl. Oh, yeah. Anything worth it, anything listened to is on vinyl. Anybody knows that. <laughs> okay, so that's your favorite song from the album, um, Jared. Mine was um, God Walks the Dark Hills. Of course, anybody knows me would know that would be the one. It's a Goodman song. Hello, Daniel Grind Staff, fine banjo player. And there's Mike Rogers again. Okay, so there's some of the folks there. Eric Gonzalez, good to see you here tonight. Eric, fine singer, speaking of fine singers. Mine was 10 p.m. Boy, y'all went to church late, Emma. I thought 9.15 was late. We had one uh, camp meeting. This is going back mm, about 1998. Maybe 1999 at Middle Tennessee Baptist Church, where I go, that ended at 1 a.m. 1 a.m. We preached and sang and shouted the roof down. Deborah Wilson, September 30th, 1979. Boy, September is a popular getting saved month. I don't know what it is about September. Whoop! North, hashtag North Mason Dixon line. Whoop, that's right. Me and you, Brother John, we may be the only two saved northerners in the bunch, but by George, we're going to heaven, aren't we? <laughs> I love it. Okay, so let me keep showing you some more pictures here. Look at all the pictures of everybody just hanging out at the singing news booth. They had couches and stuff, and man, I mean, it was the place to congregate, son, I am telling you, by the thousands. What else we got in here? There's Ken Harding of New Haven Records right there. He used to uh, be a producer and used to run Canaan Records for a while, as a matter of fact. My friend Ken Harding lives about 25 minutes from me right now. Uh, here's another boy. They in this pictorial over the last few years, they were loving them some Daryl Stewart and his red socks. About every other page, there's a different picture of Daryl and his red socks. Look at the crowd in Freedom Hall in Louisville. Whew, boy, I miss those days, don't y'all? Miss them. Okay, now let's go up here to the corner because this here's where we're headed to next. The Isaacs. There's Ben and Lily. Back in 2002, 18 years ago, Ben and Lily at the National Quartet Convention, Freedom Hall, Louisville, Kentucky. And so we're going to play uh, some Isaac music, but I'm going to give you, I'm going to show you a couple more pictures that are just in my personal stash here. Here's a picture of me giving Ben an award for the Isaacs for favorite something in the Front Porch Fellowship Fan Awards, which was held at the National Quartet Convention for years in uh, association with the Bluegrass sh Showcase that I hosted for almost 20 years. And so anyway, uh, they weren't at convention that year, so I had to run them down, and they were at a studio off of, um, off of Music Row in downtown Nashville, and they were recording a record, and Pat Flynn of Newgrass Revival was playing guitar on it. I'm just throwing that out there, just saying. And there he was, and he was in the studio with him, and I had a big time. And there I am with my crimson red shirt on, representing the blood of Christ. Or maybe it was because I just put that red shirt on that day. But anyway, I just, I just spiritualized it for you. And here I am with the Isaacs, and um, um, there's the old sheriff there. I'm at Larry's Country Diner, Larry Black. And then there's the sheriff who just died uh, about two weeks ago. And there I am, and there are the Isaacs. We were at a Larry's Country Diner taping. And uh, man, we had a big time. It was good. The Isaacs, as they always do, just simply killed it. Just killed it, is what I'm saying. So we had a big time there at Larry's Country Diner. So I thought this is Facebook Live with Less Southern Gospel Music memorabilia. Just gave you some Pictures only that I have. And memories. I'm giving you some of those too. All right. So, now let's play some Isaac's music. You know what would be good? Is if I could find the Isaac CD, then I could play some Isaac's music. That would be really good. Here we go. I just happened to uh, 
have gotten my favorite Isaac CD. Now, everybody's got their own favorite Isaac CDs, and I've got a bunch of them, but this is my tip-top, number one, all-time favorite ever Isaac CD because it has songs that's just that just blessed me. I could play He Understands My Tears because it blesses me. I could play The Reach of His Hand because it blesses me. I could uh, play I Can't Make It Lord Without You because it blesses me. I'm ready to go because I like the picking and it blesses me. But I'm going to play Stand Still. Whew. What a song. I might play two. Can I play two? Throw some hearts up if you want me to play two Isaac songs. And then we're going to go into the Facebook Live ministry part. I already gave you a little dose earlier. I see some hearts. I'm going to do two. Okay, I'm going to do... Why well, come in the name of the Lord. It's a good, good one, too. It's a good picking. I'm going to do the reach of his hand. And then... Stand still. Man, this CD, wow. I'm just here to tell you, this is one of the best bluegrass gospel CDs to ever have been recorded. The reach of his hand, the Isaacs. Let this bless you. Like a prodigal son, I went my
listen to it now. You're not too far from the Lord. Just reach out, get His hand. singer what a song here it is stand still the title song wow what a song the father has a plan though it's hard to see him now you feel you're walking all alone but he is there no doubt when the storm When you're faced with life's decisions, not sure which way to go, stand still and let God move. Let God move. Standing still is hard to do. Exodus chapter 14 here for just a couple minutes. What do you say? Exodus 14. We'll start right with verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, speaking to the children of Israel, that they turn and encamp before Pihahirath, between Migdal and the sea, over against Baal Zephon, before it shall ye, before it shall ye encamp by the sea. For Pharaoh will say unto the children of Israel, they are entangled in the land, the wilderness hath shut them in. Boy, they were in a tight spot. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart that he shall follow after them, and I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all his host, that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. And they did so. And it was told the king of Egypt that the people fled in the heart of Pharaoh and of his servants was turned against the people. And they said, why have we done this, that, ye, that we have let Israel go from serving us? And he made ready his chariot and took his people with him. And he took 600 chosen chariots and all the chariots of Egypt and the captains over every one of them. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued after the children of Israel, and the children of Israel went out 
with a high hand. A high hand. <laughs> Hallelujah. But the Egyptians pursued after them all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh and his horsemen and his army and overtook them in camping the sea beside pi before baal Zephon. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were sore afraid, and the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. And they said unto Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Grumbling and complaining, just like they've been doing for 40 years. Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us, to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is not this the word that we did tell, uh, uh, tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than we should die in the wilderness. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not. And what's he say next? Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Which he will show to you, to, which he will show to you today, for the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. Get a hold of that. the The folks that they just saw today, they'll never see them again, except for whenever they wash their dead carcasses up on the seashore. And we'll get to that in just a little bit. And, the Mo and Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still. Boy, I got to thinking about what's been going on in America the last few months. Do you think maybe the Lord has just been trying to tell us to stand still? You know, I want to talk to you men for just a minute here. It's in our DNA, alpha males of which I am one. We think we know it all, we can fix it all, and there's nothing too big for us. Bring on the problems, we'll hit them between the eyes and it'll go away. Sometimes, men, we need to sit down and shut up and stand still and watch the salvation of the Lord. I can't tell you of the times where I've taken it upon my own self to fix something that, that didn't need to be fixed the way I fixed it. It needed to be fixed the way the Lord wanted it fixed. I needed to stand still and watch the Lord do what the Lord does. Because ain't nobody can do what the Lord does better than the way the Lord does it. That includes you, men, and me. Verse 14, the Lord shall fight for you. I don't care how big of a fighter you are physically, mentally, even a spiritual giant. You can't do more for you than the Lord can do for you. The Lord shall fight for you, and he shall hold your and ye he, ye shall hold your peace. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me, speak unto the children of Israel, that they go forward? But lift up thy rod, and stretch out thy hand over the sea, and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. Now, if left to their own devices, they would have been probably thinking, okay, let's see, maybe we can build a quick raft or a quick boat or some kind of, some kind of a, you know, a dinghy or a, a, a floating device for all. I mean, they would have started rationalizing in their mind. They could have never conjured up what the Lord's getting ready to. And I behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them. I will go, I will get my honor upon Pharaoh and upon all his host, upon his chariots and upon his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh, upon his chariots and upon his horsemen. And the angel of God, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them. And the pillar of the cloud went from their face and stood behind them. And it came between the camp 
I lost my place. <laughs> and it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel, and it was a cloud of darkness to them, but it gave light by night to these, so that the one came not near the other all night. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. I remember, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to chase a rabbit for a minute. I'm going to come back to this. I was watching some sort of a PBS TV special once. This has been about 15 years ago. And they were talking about this particular uh, episode in the Bible. And they had scientists and they had academics and academia and everybody sitting there explaining how that happened. That it was, it was a, uh, the way the mountains were situated and the angles of the mountains and the way the wind blew and off of the, off of the mountains. And then it caused this kind of a vacuum and then the water parted. And they were explaining everything away only the way academia can explain. And I always wear house shoes at night in my house. And I had had enough of it. I took my left one off. I threw it at the TV. I started preaching to it. I took my right one off, threw it at the TV, and kept right on preaching. They were trying to explain the way away the power of God. Let me tell you, it wasn't some kind of angle. And by the way, I was sitting there preaching to it, saying, okay, where'd the mountains come from? Where'd the winds come from? How come it got the exact angle you're talking about? Who did all that? I tell you who did it. God did it. Verse 22, hallelujah. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. How about that? God did it. And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them in the midst of the sea, even all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. And it came to pass that in the morning watch, the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of the cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians and took of their chariot wheels that they drave them heavily so that the Egyptians said, let us flee from the face of Israel for the Lord fighteth for them against the Egyptians. And the Lord said unto Moses, stretch out thine hand over the sea that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and upon their horsemen. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to his strength when the morning appeared. And the Egyptians fled against it, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. Somebody say hallelujah. And the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the hosts of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. There remained not so much as one of them. What about that? I'm talking about standing still and see what the Lord can do. But the children of Israel walked upon dry land. I can just envision them. They had a host of they had a host of people on the very front with brooms, get the dust out of the way. Hallelujah. But the children of Israel walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians. Glory to God. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. They saw them again dead. And Israel saw the great work which the Lord did, did upon the Egyptians. And the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. And all that happened. Why? Because they stood still and watched the salvation of the Lord. Men, stop trying to figure God out. Let God be God sometime, would you? I know that's not all the time. Sometimes what the Lord wants us to do is to get up and move and go do something. When, when it's time for that, get up and do it. But when it's time to sit down and hush and let the Lord be the Lord, sit down and do it. Hallelujah. I'm done. <laughs> Stand still, praise God. Let me see who's on here. See, I last looked at, whoop, hashtag north of Mason-Dixon line. Let me go from there. Here's Regina and Nate Fortner. How you doing, gang? Emma Bunch. We just got back from Wednesday night. I was at home. I was home June 27, 2012. Oh, when you got saved. Amen, Emma. There's Jason and there's Miss Maggie. Yeah, I remember that night. 
Amber and Jared Vanderslice, Wednesday, November 14th, 1990. Praise the Lord. David Stewart, yes, I do. Scott Airy Carvath, good to see you. Patty Graham, November 18th, 1975. That's good, Miss Patty. Pam and Perry Fordham, Brad Gates, go for it. Adam and Angel says, play five. <laughs> David Stewart says, stand still. John Hamlin says, pour it on. David Stewart, Tim Sturt, what about Tim, man? Son, that man sung that song. Hey, Darren Lore. Jo jo John Hamlin, number five, Les Butler. All right, I'll play number five before I go. Patty Graham, amen. Randy Blakely uh, is watching. Nathan Morris, Annette uh, Wallander Bingaman. Hey, Annette, good to see you. Pamela Grimes, Karen Elkins. Hey, Miss K, good to see you. Missy, Ava, Kasich, good to see you. He's about to deliver again. <laughs> yes, that's right. Good word, Missy. Amen. John Hamlin. All right, Brother John. Zane King. Oh, still Zane. What a still guitar player. Hillbilly Gilly, August of 69. Hillbilly, you're old. Betty Chase. Hello, Les. Good word. Well, amen on the, on the word. The word of God is good. Let me play that song here for Brother John and for Abby and uh, Addie and Angel and Adam. And here we go. They said song number five. Here it is. It's called I'm Ready to Go. How come I ain't doing it? Let me see here. Let me, get, let me do that. Ooh, paddle faster than there's banjo. Hillbilly, I know he likes a banjo kickoff, so I know he liked that. Oh, let's see. Anna Sue Butler Fritter Incorporated, the best. Thank you. Ava thought about me today. Uh, estate sale with some old LPs. You know it. You know it, Ava. You should have bought me a bunch and mailed it to me. Joshua Hodges, John Hamlin. Thank you, Les Butler. Amen. Hillbilly Gilly, nothing like a banjo kickoff. That's right. Brian Roffel, good to see you jump on here. All right. Well, we got Zane and his steel guitar. We played all kinds of banjo music. 
We had Southern Gospel from the Perrys and from Greater Vision with an orchestra from Budapest, Hungary. So we've done everything from orchestras to banjos and everything in between. Zane, I need to bring you over to the house to do one of these Facebook Lives and bring your steel guitar, and you and I will do some stuff together. So, if you like steel guitar music, Zane King is the man, is what I'm saying. Mac Daddy. Well, all right, call 800-360-5051 right now. Call it right now, 800 800- 3605051 and I want you to tell me who is going to win the uh, singing news category for favorite young artist. The nominees again are Autumn Neelan Clark of the Neelans, Trevor Conkle of the Mark Trammell Quartet, Carrie Gooch, Karen Peck and New River, Kennedy Hayes, Mylon Hayes family, Ethan Whisnett of the Whisnets. 800-360-5051. Stay tuned for that uh, information on the Southern Gospel Station coming back to Middle Tennessee. Oh, I sure hope to give you all the information tomorrow. It's so close and it's so exciting. December 7, 8, 9, Gatlinburg. Join me, the Old Time Preachers Quartet, Barry Roland and Deliverance, and a bunch of others as we eat and sing and eat and preach and eat and sing and eat. We'll preach, then we'll eat again. We're going to do that for three days, December 7, 8, 9. Get your adult Sunday school class together and be a part of it. All right, let's see. If all goes well tomorrow, just to give you a little teaser, let me see what I got. See, we've been in 2002. Oh, we're still going to be in 2002. And the music will either be coming from, let's see, it could be coming from the Booth Brothers, could be coming from the Florida Boys, could be coming from the Kingdom Heirs, could be coming from Ernie Haas' Signature Sound, or Greater Vision again, or Aaron Wilburn, or the Spears, or Jerry Goff, or Phil Cross, or Mike Holcomb, or Tim Lovelace, or the McCamies. Who do you want me to play tomorrow night? Booth Brothers, Florida Boys, Kingdom Heirs, Ernie Haas, Aaron Wilburn, Greater Vision, Jerry Goff, Spears, uh, Phil Cross, McCamies, Mike Holcomb, Tim Lovelace. Here, send it to me right now, real quick. Send it to me. Who do you want to hear tomorrow? Type it in. Who you want to hear? You know I'm going to have to play Mike Holcomb tomorrow because he's my traveling buddy with the Old Time Preachers Quartet, and he's the best, and he deserves it, and he's going to get it tomorrow. We want to play something for Mike Holcomb tomorrow. That's going to happen. But who else do you want to hear? Type it in. Andrew wants to hear Greater Vision again. Okay, we might do Greater Vision again. Adam and Angel say the Boof Brothers. B-O-O-F. Boof Brothers. Okay, who else? Anybody else want to weigh in? Oh, my Aunt Sue likes the McCamies. She likes it when Peg kicks her shoes off. I do too, for that matter. All right, who else? Come on, weigh in. We got Greater Vision, Booth Brothers, McCamies. Another Greater Vision, okay. Brad Gates says, play them all. Brad, I work for a living. I've already worked 14 hours today. Take it easy on me, would you? I don't get paid a penny for this, man. Take it easy on me, would you? Patty says, McCamey's Phil Cross and Mike Holcomb. Oh, we're going to play Mike Holcomb tomorrow night. That's going to happen. Okay. Scott says, Phil Cross, I stand redeemed. It's my favorite. Well, no, it's my second favorite Phil Cross song. I am redeemed is, Phil, is my favorite Phil song. I stand redeemed was, I guess, Legacy 5 you're talking about. Maybe we're talking about the same song. Aaron uh, Wilburn from Ava, okay? I haven't done any Aaron Wilburn. I might have to do some Aaron Wilburn tomorrow night. All right. Ricky, we're done. Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow night. Facebook Live with less Southern Gospel Music, Memorabilia, Memories, Ministry. Good night.